What's up guys, Orain here, and in this Support Thursday video, we're gonna be addressing a support question I received on making your iPhone just a little bit more secure. We're actually gonna go over 10 things you can do to kind of change some settings or check some settings to make sure they're enabled or disabled so your iPhone is as secure as possible for you to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And for you Android users, I did not forget about you guys. I'm gonna be doing a companion video next Support Thursday on some Android settings you guys can change in your phones and Android tablets to make your Android devices just a little bit safer but for this week it's all about the Apple guys so without further ado let's head to the table and take a look at some of those security settings you need to update on your iPhone or iPad all right guys so real quick what I'm basically gonna do is just show you a couple of settings where those settings are and what the preferred settings for those settings are going to be I don't wanna make this video too long so we're gonna just gonna get into it really quick so one of the first places I'm gonna show you that's pretty important is your passwords that are stored on your actual device itself you can actually use your iPhone to kind of audit the passwords that you have stored and your iPhone will even tell you if you're reusing the same password across too many different platforms. So if you go into your settings real quick and you go to accounts and passwords, and you have your passwords, your website and app passwords here. Now it's gonna authenticate via Face ID. I only have one real password stored in here, but because this is really a demo phone for me, but if you have a ton of different application passwords and website passwords, you'll see a list of them here and an exclamation point will be next to the accounts that have the same passwords used across the board. One of the reasons this is pretty important is because you actually don't want to use the same password too much because if somebody gains access to one account by an attrition they can kind of go down the list of your different accounts and try to gain access using the same credentials they were able to get for the other account so this just kind of gives you a way to audit the passwords on your iPhone check to make sure you're not using the same passwords on too many different applications and if you are just make the change one of the suggestions I can make is that there are really cool applications that auto generate passwords for you and also store those passwords like LastPass is one of the ones I I definitely like to use and I'll even show you how you can kind of enable that on the iPhone a little bit later so the next option I want to show you is how to restrict different applications from using or accessing your Bluetooth if they don't need to access your Bluetooth your Bluetooth is another connection it's another way into your phone shutting down any of those entrances into your phone is always important if the application doesn't need Bluetooth access why give it Bluetooth access and this one's gonna be located in your settings privacy and then Bluetooth and it'll give you a list of applications that have full access to your Bluetooth connection here. You can kind of take a look and go through, like for instance, AMC Theaters doesn't need access to my Bluetooth. I can shut that off. Fitbit, maybe. The Alexa app, because I have the Amazon Echo Buds, maybe. Google Play, not necessarily. And the image application, that's a hit or miss. So you can kind of just go down the list and see what applications have access to your Bluetooth connection. And then cut off the ones that don't need access to the Bluetooth. That way your device is as secured as possible. Now, like I said, if you downloaded a third party application like LastPass or OnePass, you can actually control those applications via your iPhone. If you go into your settings, accounts and passwords and the autofill section here, you actually have the ability to select a third party application that can hold the passwords that you have stored in your phone. One of the options though that is important here is the autofill password option. You can kind of make an assumption or choice to turn that on and off. A lot of people for convenience love to have it on that basically what that does is as soon as you open up a website or go to a website that has a password stored in your phone, it automatically fills in that information and makes logging in just a little bit simpler. If you turn that off, your last pass will still pick up the website, but you have to kind of manually go in and get the password information and log in that way. That's definitely a little bit more secure than having it auto-filled, but it's also a lot more inconvenient. So here's where you're probably going to have to kind of trade off security for convenience. It's all your choice, but this is where that setting is located and it's another thing that you can kind of enable or in this case disable to make your account just a little bit more secure so another thing we're going to take a look at is making sure that no usb devices can be plugged directly into your phone to gain access to your information if you go to your face id and passcode information here it's going to ask you to authenticate and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of that list you have your usb accessory option here i always suggest disabling this unless you know you're connecting usb devices directly to your phone one of the things that can be a security risk if this is enabled someone can actually just connect a USB device
device that will then automatically be granted access to the information that's inside your phone itself. You don't want that. You want to make sure your phone is as locked down as possible. If you are connecting USB devices to your phone, my suggestion would be to enable and disable this setting as needed. Don't just keep it enabled 100% of the time because it can cause issues. And to piggyback off this, the fifth thing that I'm going to suggest is that you take a look at this actual list that's here. What this list is, is all the things that are basically enabled when your screen is locked. So if you look, I have everything enabled. So when my screen is locked, they can see the today view, they can see my notification center, my control center. They can even reply to messages, get my home control, my wallet access is there as well, and even return missed calls. So you can kind of go through this list and disable any of these things you don't want to be accessed. Via your lock screen, you can envision a scenario where your phone is left unattended somewhere and a message comes in and somebody is able to reply to that message or see that message information, return a phone call, or even gain access to your Apple wallet. So you can go through and just kind of lock down all those things that you don't want to be displayed when your screen is locked. Just to make your phone a little bit more secured going forward. One of the most important things for most people nowadays with their mobile device is to be as, I guess, anonymous as possible as well. And Apple actually has a location tracking service that's enabled on the majority of iPhones. In order to get to that setting, you would go privacy, location, system, services. And if you go all the way into the middle of this list, you'll see a bunch of different location-based services there. So you have location-based alerts, location-based Apple ads, suggestions. All those are basically just tracking the locations that you're in. So if you shut all of those off, it prevents your phone from using the GPS inside to kind of track the locations you've been to and the locations you're going to. It may make some of the advertisements or ads you get a little bit more generic, but we don't like ads or advertisements anyway, so it's not hurting us too much. Another area that you would need to check in this menu is the significant locations. Significant locations is basically your phone tracking a location that you go to pretty often. So your home is going to be listed here. Your workplace is going to be listed here. Any area that you travel to a significant amount of time, the iPhone kind of catalogs that address that area and keeps it stored within the iPhone itself. It's pretty secured as it's encrypted, but if anyone was able to gain access to your phone, they can actually kind of track your movements and see the significant locations and gain your home address or your work address via these significant locations. So I actually like turning this off. For me, there's really no reason to have it on. Switch it off unless you want to have it on. If you do have it on, I would go in there every now and then and just kind of clear out the history to make sure you're not storing any information that may compromise you in the future. Another thing I'd like to switch off is that Apple kind of sometimes takes a catalog of the Siri requests that you make via your phone. So if you say, you know, those magic words of hey, and then ask Siri a question, that question is then answered, but that data is also stored within the iPhone itself for development purposes, but some of the requests that you're making can be forwarded to developers, which can be then seen by other people. If you don't want your C request being seen, then you definitely want to adjust the setting. So you want to go into your settings, of course, you want to go into privacy, and then you want to look at your analytics and improvements. And in here, you have a bunch of different things that are being shared with Apple. The one I was talking about is the Siri and dictation. You want to make sure that's shut off, but you also just want to go through the list and see all the things that are being shared on your phone and what you don't want to be shared on your phone. As you can see, there's a couple of things on the list, like the health records, your health and activity, your iCloud information, what you're sharing with app developers. Just overall in general, you can go through this list and kind of decide what information you want to be shared. Uh, a lot of people don't want to share anything and it's okay to switch all of these settings off. It's not not going to do anything to your phone or hinder the way your phone works or the overall performance of the phone itself. This is just information that Apple is using to better improve their services, better improve their data, and app developers use to better improve their applications, but it is your data that's being shared with them. Go ahead and switch it all off if you don't feel comfortable sharing it. If you do want to share it, then it's not a problem. We'll move on to the next thing. The next setting I'm going to take a look at is the one that helps prevent brute force attacks on your phone. And what brute force attacks are is just basically somebody continually entering in password after password to try to gain access to your device. So if you go into your face ID and password, scroll all the way to the bottom and you have your erase data here. And if you enable this, what this basically does is that it gives you a 
a limit. So you, someone can enter the wrong information 10 times and then everything is erased. Your iPhone is completely wiped and everything is basically secured and locked down. This is kind of a hit or miss setting. Some people like enabling it. Some people don't like enabling it just in case they forget your password frequently. If you're a person that continuously forgets your password on a frequent basis, you may not want to enable this setting. If you're someone that knows your password automatically all the time, it doesn't change for the most part. You probably want to enable the setting because then you won't be entering in the wrong password 10 times. This one is definitely all up to you. Enabling it definitely secures your data just a little bit more. But if you turn around and enter your password in wrong 10 times, you're going to wipe your phone. So you're going to have to make that decision. The other setting I'm going to suggest that you enable is the two factor authentication for your iCloud. And you can do that via your iPhone or iPad by going to your settings, clicking on your name, going into the passwords and security options there. And then the two factor authentication option is going to be turned on here. Basically what the two factor authentication is, if you don't know, is it's just sending another authentication process to another device. So if somebody was even able to get your iCloud password, they wouldn't be able to access your account unless they also had whatever device that two factor is going to. If it's going to your cell phone, it would also need your iCloud account plus your cell phone or your iCloud account plus your iPad or wherever this is going. It's just another way or another layer of securing your account. And I definitely would suggest turning it on. Sometimes it can be a little bit inconvenient if you log in and out of your account on a regular basis to enter that other code in. But we all just want to be a little bit more secure because of all the information you store within your iCloud. Enabling two factor is known to prevent at least 80% of hacks from happening. So that's a pretty good number and I would definitely do it. And before we wrap it up, just some honorable mentions. One of the other things I would definitely always do is just to check and make sure that your airdrop settings are not set to everyone on a continuous basis. Airdrop is just another avenue into your phone. If you're not airdropping anything, just go ahead and shut it off completely. When you're ready to airdrop, enable it again. Leaving it open just gives people the ability to drop things into your device because your device is always open to the network. Anybody close by can actually read and detect your device and drop things into your phone that you necessarily don't want to be dropped into your phone. So make sure you kind of disable your airdrop settings and you'll be good to go. Also just keep an eye on your Wi-Fi settings as well. Make sure that the Wi-Fi network you're connected to is one that you know. I always suggest when you're in public, don't connect to public Wi-Fi. Use a VPN. It's a lot safer than connecting to a public Wi-Fi. It helps protect the information that's within your phone itself sometimes. And always just default to your mobile carrier. So if you have 4G or 5G, use your 4G or 5G. Don't connect to a Wi-Fi unless it's absolutely necessary or unless you know it's completely safe. So the last one we're going to take a look at is preventing any kind of data leakage on your iPhone itself. And that's just visible data leakage via your notifications and show notifications preview. This setting has three settings. It's always when locked or never. So this is basically any notifications that you receive into your phone that pops up on the screen or display. I usually like showing it to when the screen is locked. Just keep an eye on when that happens. If you leave your phone unattended, notifications will pop up on your screen and people will be able to read those notifications. If you set it to never, then the notifications won't pop up, but you will get the different badges to indicate that notifications have come in. Again, it's sacrificing convenience for security is a little bit less convenient to have the notifications not pop up, but a lot more secure. Somewhere in the middle would be only when it's locked that it's displaying on the screen itself, which is an improvement. You just kind of have to keep an eye on your phone. You make the decision on which setting is best for you but now you know where the setting is and you can change it as needed. Hope these settings really help you make your device just a little bit more secure. Hopefully you can go in and check all 10 or at least a couple of them. If you have any support or secure tips that I didn't share in this video, go ahead and share them in the comment section down below the video. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and that like button because it really does help out the channel with that bell for notification so you don't miss on release some cool, helpful content like this one. Until next time, guys, what I'm gonna do is share an older iPhone support video here. You can check that out. And this is something YouTube believes you'd enjoy watching. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. And as always, stay safe and peace out.